Розмови про культуру, спонсорований святом Дня Незалежності, під гаслом 100 років боротьби за волю України від січових стрільців до АТО. 22 серпня в Сентеніо Парк. The Ukrainian Galician Army had a Jewish battalion that fought alongside the Ukrainians. What was the role of Jews and national minorities in general in the independence struggle? The uh, entire population uh, of Galicia was perhaps 10% Jewish. In some areas of eastern Galicia and the Ukrainian regions, uh, very high in a number of the small towns and in the city of Lviv itself. Uh, Jews were more numerous than Ukrainians or Greek Catholics as the Austrian, because the Austrian census gives us religion. Uh, the Jewish population in some, uh, in some elite spheres had become Polonized at the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century. Earlier they had become Germanized and then uh, uh, with the Polish control of Eastern Galicia some of the elite had become pro-Polish. The large, uh, the vast majority of Jews in Eastern Galicia spoke Yiddish uh, as their as their language, uh, and the Jewish community, when the struggle breaks out, wanted to declare its neutrality. That is, that it would take neither side in this war. Uh, there was a pogrom when the Poles retake Lviv by the Polish troops against the, uh, against the Jewish population uh, for uh, having taken neutrality, and the Poles conscript Jews into the Polish forces. Ukrainians initially declared that they would respect the Jewish neutrality, and, uh, but then, uh, as the struggle goes on, and particularly in the areas around Ternopil, there are Jewish units that have been formed for protection of Jewish population. And from them, a Jewish unit of the Ukrainian Galician army is formed. And that unit then, uh, when the Ukrainians are pushed out of Eastern Galicia, retreats with the Ukrainian Galician army. Uh, and it shows a high level of combat readiness uh, during the war with the Poles. Uh, there had already begun uh, as early as 1907 to be more in uh, close agreements for electoral concerns between the Jewish population and the Ukrainian population of Galicia uh, to try and cooperate against the dominant Polish groups in, in the zone. Uh, so uh, this was a very important moment for Jewish-Ukrainian relations. To, uh, obviously the fact that the Ukrainian state recognized Jews as a minority, that is, with a right to their own culture, uh, and it even in Eastern Ukraine initially uh, declared that uh, Jews, the Yiddish as a language or Hebrew, depending on their choice, would be recognized as a language of population, uh, gives personal cultural autonomy to the Jewish population and represents an important phase in the evolution of Jewish self-identity uh, as a national group. There were also other siege riflemen who fought to defend Kyiv and central and eastern Ukraine. Who were they and what was their significance? There were a large number of prisoners taken from uh, the Austro-Hungarian forces, particularly in, the, in this period of 1914-15. Uh, they are uh, moved into the interior of the empire closer and uh, many were in the regions around the city of Kyiv. Uh, as in February of 1917, uh, the Romanov Empire first has a revolution which overthrows the Tsar and then ultimately uh, begins its dissolution, uh, Ukrainians in eastern Ukraine, uh, led by Mikhailo Hrushevsky when he is released because of this, uh, form the Central Rada or the group that takes power in 1917. And by the end of 1917, beginning of 1918, uh, that group is evolving into the Ukrainian National or People's Republic. It finally declares total independence from Russia on the 22nd of January of 1918. Uh, but that also meant that as the Galician Ukrainians and Bukovinian Ukrainians who are imprisoned are leaving, uh, uh, leaving these prisoner camps, uh, they then join the forces of the Ukrainian National Republic and they form uh, a siege unit in eastern Ukraine, uh, that becomes some of the most important troops uh, supporting the Ukrainian National Republic. And many of the leaders, including Evhen Konovalets, Andriy Melnik, that are associated with la later Ukrainian political movements, uh, are involved in this formation of the siege groups in eastern Ukraine. Uh, 
Uh, as we know, the uh, Ukrainian movement had not been allowed to develop in the Russian Empire to the degree of the Austrian. Uh, there was a much lower level of attachment to the Ukrainian cause, I would say, among the mass of the population. Although, of course, eastern Ukraine, with its large population, its wealthy land, uh, was able relatively quickly, and in 1917, 18, 19, uh, massive changes were occurring in identity. Uh, but within them, the, the Galicians, with their, these traditions they had brought from the, the siege from before the, the First World War, their dedication uh, of, to uh, an independent Ukrainian state form a very important part uh, of the military forces of the Ukrainian National Republic. The Ukrainian siege riflemen fought not only with rifles. Um, they undertook cultural and educational activity to enlighten the people they had liberated. Can you tell me a little bit about that activity? Sure. Uh, the, uh, of course, many of these people came from these educational groups, cultural groups. Uh, we can say this tremendous uh, crescendo of national feeling produced, above all those things which most people know today, the songs of the siege riflemen, which are still sung. The Oyoluzi Chervona Kalina uh, became a Ukrainian national song, and we've seen this in the restoration in Ukraine of, of, of that song. Uh, but also because uh, they were dedicated to the documentation uh, of their struggle, uh, to uh, producing uh, a new mass consciousness, uh, and in that they served two ways. They were the creators of culture in many cases, and they certainly were the subjects of much of culture, as I pointed out, the Stefanik stories, uh, uh, many that go on afterwards. And in that way, uh, they produce a, a, a new culture for a new generation in Ukraine uh, that is extremely important in the interwar period after the loss of the struggle uh, in uh, uh, promoting the national spirit uh, not only of the generation who had struggled for an independent Ukrainian state, but, but of those who had to live under what they saw as foreign occupation. What was the role of women in the siege riflemen? Yes, it turns out that uh, always when we discuss these earlier periods, uh, and as we turn towards women's history, we want to look for these topics. They turn out to be ex extremely important uh, because of the formation of a women's unit. Uh, it was led by Olena Stepanyu, uh, Olena Stepanyu uh, and the women's group that's formed among the siege riflemen uh, then becomes extremely important in the time of the Western Ukrainian Republic and in the Ukrainian Galician army. Uh, she is a heroine of the war effort and persecuted for it. Uh, she is extremely important as well uh, and is related to a number of important figures in in uh, Ukrainian culture and uh, in Ukrainian political life. So that women's unit is very important and indeed I, I, I think that a, a new album of, uh, dedicated to the women in the, in the siege has come out recently and, and memorializing their role. In what way do Ukrainian soldiers defending their country today against aggression from the east follow in the footsteps of the siege riflemen? The issue of course is uh, volunteer and uh, civil society organizing itself for the defense. So in many ways, uh, the siege riflemen came out of uh, the organic work and civil society that had been conducted by the Ukrainian movement. Uh, these were, after all, within the Austro-Hungarian Empire, groups, would, whether they be the reading rooms or these various sporting groups, uh, which had represented the Ukrainian cause because uh, there were groups willing to organize themselves. Uh, and then, of course, they go to the Austrian authorities uh, and are successful in forming a military unit under them. Uh, and those kind of civil active traditions and patriotism are what we really saw first in the Maidan itself, that is, the creation of the Maidan, how the Maidan developed, how society organized itself, how it saw it was able to resist powers. Uh, and then uh, in the next phase, which has once again uh, been a period of Russian aggression, occupation of Ukrainian territory, uh, attempts to uh, establish uh, now called the Russian world, the Ruski Mir, uh, using once again the Russian Orthodox Church as a, as a weapon within this, as Ukrainian society has organized. Uh, now, of course, what we have seen is the destruction of Ukrainian patriots and Ukrainian society within those occupied zones in, in the far eastern parts of of Donetsk and Luhansk Oblast that are taken over. As I said earlier, from 19, late 1980s on, uh, the tradition of, this, of the siege riflemen 
uh, the uh, songs uh, have come back and become part of that tradition. Uh, so I think we can see many parallels in that. The difference, of course, now is that these groups are fighting for a Ukrainian state that exists, uh, not for the dream to form uh, a Ukrainian state, uh, but, uh, but in, in that willingness to, uh, to give down their lives in some cases and certainly to put themselves in danger, they're, they're continuing that tradition which comes from 1914. Thank you very much. You've given us a lot to think about. Thank you very much. Since Ukraine achieved its independence in 1991, Ukrainians all over the world have celebrated this anniversary with pomp and pride. Let us remember that we have this privilege and opportunity because of Ukraine's military achievements throughout history and the valor and sacrifice of its soldiers and everyday warriors, such as the warriors of Kiev and Rus, the Cossacks, the sea riflemen we discussed here, the soldiers manning the trenches in Ukraine today, and the regular people who through simple acts of innocent resistance, are not allowing Ukraine to fall to a relentless bully. Glory to Ukraine, Slava Ukraini. Glory to its heroes, Slava Heroyam. Rozmowy pro kulturu, sponsorowany Światą Dnia Niezależności, pod hasłem 100 roków borodźby za wolę Ukrainy, wicy człowiek strzelił do ato, 22 sierpnia w Centennial Park. <mulity>